Now algebraic sets, which are the closed sets, they give a topology and this topology is called Zariski topology. So we are going to define topology in terms of closed sets. In general, the, it is defined in terms of open sets, uh, but taking complement of closed sets gives you open set. So for example, the entire space is closed set because this entire space comes from the equation 0 equals to 0. Null set is also a closed set because equation 1 equals to 0 has a solution null set because 1 is never equal to 0. Now this we have talked about before if I1 contains I2 this implies vanishing set of I1 is contained in vanishing set of I2 because if you keep adding more polynomials then you are going to decrease the solution set not increase it because all the polynomials have to simultaneously vanish on that set. So if you keep adding more and more polynomials the set of common zeros is most likely going to decrease and that is what this statement says. Statement 3 is also very uh, trivial in the sense that 0 of f plus g this is so you want to find 0 of f plus g so what you do is you find the zeros of f and you find zeros of g and you say this zeros of f plus g is nothing but common zeros of common zeros of f and g and this common becomes the intersection sign here this summation is the sum of f and g so the only thing we need to prove is this part 4 so vanishing set of two ideals i and j is vanishing set of i union vanishing set of j so first we prove this vanishing set of i intersection j is a subset of vanishing set of i union vanishing set of j so what we are going to prove is that if x does not lie in vanishing set of i union vanishing set of j then x does not lie in vanishing set of i intersection j so you can think of this as contrapositive so this is what we are going to show and that obviously implies this result so if x does not lie in vanishing set of i union vanishing set of j then there exists f in ideal i and a polynomial g in ideal j such that g of x is not equal to 0 and f of x is not equal to 0. So f times g this will lie in i intersection j and f g x is not equal to 0 because f of x is not 0 and g of x is not 0. So f and g both of them do not vanish on the set so x does not lie in the vanishing set of i intersection j. Now in the other direction so if x lies in vanishing set of i union vanishing set of j we are going to show that this implies x lies in vanishing set of i intersection j so if this holds then obviously there exists some polynomial you pick up f you could have picked up g but doesn't matter you pick up f in i such that f of x is 0 now f of g will lie in i intersection j and f g x would be 0 because if f is 0 you put in x to it this f of x times g of x will become 0 because f of x is 0 so this implies that x lies in the vanishing set of i intersection j so this is also done so these four put together show that there is a topology and the topology is called the Zariski topology now we have seen before that the complement of closed sets which are open sets are very large and most likely not Hausdorff. Um, just to make the point again, for example, you are given this plane C2 and you are given a point. The complement of the point is the entire space. So open set is very, very large. So open set is the entire space around this point. So this entire blue space is the open set. And now you can see it is very, very large. Now we come to the correspondence between these vanishing sets V and I the ideals. So you take an ideal in A, you know, A is this K X1, X2 all the way to Xn. So you take the ideals in it, J in A and then you apply the vanishing set, you get the 
algebraic sets. So j goes to vanishing set of j that is x element of this f of x is 0 for all f and j. Now corresponding to this there is an inverse operation. So you take the subsets x and you make an ideal out of this. So this i of x is nothing but set of all those polynomials in A. So all those polynomials in here which vanish simultaneously on this algebraic set x. So all the polynomials which vanish simultaneously. So you have taken an algebraic set and converted into an ideal. Here you took an ideal and converted into an algebraic set. So this is an algebraic set. This is an ideal. From here you are taking subsets and converting them into ideals. So notice the correspondence here and here. So the first thing is if x is a subset of y, this implies ideal of x contains ideal of y. So first notice this that x is a smaller set. It is contained in a bigger set y. So if x is a smaller set, that means more polynomials are more likely to vanish on it. Obviously, it will contain all the polynomials which vanish on bigger set y will also vanish on x because y contains x. And since x is a smaller set, there are more likely more polynomials on x which vanish and which might not vanish on the bigger set capital Y. So y could just contain more points. So obviously this would immediately imply that ideal of x contains ideal of y because there are more functions vanishing on x. So there are more functions which vanish on x. Now the second is x is a subset of vanishing set of ideal of x. So functions which vanish on x obviously lie in the ideal of x because that is a definition you know ideal of x is precisely those functions which vanish on this set x so f of x is 0 for all x in x so this is the definition for the ideal so the functions which vanish on x obviously lie in the ideal on x and therefore you know the vanishing set of those functions will contain this algebraic set x so this is kind of uh, tautological uh, we are saying exactly the same thing in English uh, what we are writing down. Now there is an equality if and only if, so this should be if and only if, x is an algebraic set. So, so if x is equal to the vanishing set of v of i of x, then obviously x is an algebraic set you know because x is given as a vanishing set of something so it makes it an algebraic set on the other hand if x is equal to vanishing set of some ideal then obviously all the functions which uh, vanish on set x they will contain this ideal i0 by definition here because f of x is 0 for all x in x for this ideal of x so this this is going to contain i of 0 and you know the vanishing set is uh, inclusion reversion function so if you put v to it you have v i of x just contain on v of i 0 which is equal to x so again you have the equality so the last is if j belongs to this set a this a is nothing but this ring here so if j is an ideal in a then j is a subset of i v of j. Now this is also easy to show obviously if f does not belong to this uh, ideal of v of j then obviously f will not vanish on v of j because the definition is that the f has to vanish on it. So f does not vanish on uh, f does not vanish on uh, v of j. and therefore f does not lie in uh, j because the definition is that if f lies in j then it has to vanish from here.